Alice and Justin Wheezy with Wheezy Outdoors, and we are here because Bear Camp's over. Bear Camp is over, and it was a great year. Banner season. Banner year. Banner I wish season. every year was like this, but... I tell you what, it was much needed, especially after coming out of a season like last year, wouldn't you say? I thought we weren't going to talk about last season. Oh, yeah. No, we don't talk Last season was, it was stressful. We had a very tough year with all the acorns. The heat, I mean, it was just... We don't talk us, about Us, the <laughs> other guides in camp, we were banging our heads up against a brick wall. So coming out of that season, coming out of this year, it just, it highlighted everything for I mean, it was a huge thing to have what we had happen this year. And this season, why don't you talk about it? We had 15 clients. 15. Or we can go with 16. 16. I was 16. I was hunter number 16. So. You don't count though. It counts. I got to hunt. So as <laughs> here in Minnesota, um, us guides, we have no more privileges than uh, another hunter. We have to draw a tag just like everybody else. And for our area in 51, we do guide in 46 also. Both areas are phenomenal from right here in our location. It took me four years to draw my tag, which I totally understand. We try getting surplus when we can. Number one thing, clients come first, we come second. That has always been our motto in this camp. And so what I waited till Pretty much everybody had a hundred percent opportunity at a bear yes. before I jumped in the stand. And you jumped in the stand. I jumped. Yeah. I, I I like how he says that um, you had to wait four years for a tag. Uh, how many preference points do I have now? Do you have any ideas, Skipper? Yeah, Alice has <laughs> like ten preference points, but she also has gotten a bear. A I, did, years I, ago. I got a surplus tag. That was two thousand twenty-two. And you harvested a bear. Because I was pregnant with Asa at that time. So Alice and I, we rotate. We go back and forth. He gets it more so than I do. So it's about every it. every two to three years for him, every four years for me. <laughs> I get a tag. Next year, she tries for a surplus or either gets drawn. And actually, the last couple has been surplus. And you've harvested a bear off those. So. I've only got one... We're going in way too much in depth. But too I much know. detail, but let's go back into this year's hunt. Let's just do that at this Before point. we start a domestic. So this year, the it was awesome. The food was down in the woods. Acorns weren't as plentiful. They did start dropping a little earlier. I was a little bit nervous, but the baits never stopped. They just kept going, and we could not keep these baits filled enough. No, we were actually running out of bear bait. Um, we called Jason Morris with Wildwood Bear Baits and I'm like, I need about four more barrels of trail mix. What do you got? And unfortunately, he was actually sold out at the time. Um, lucky for us, Lucky 7 Bear Bait opened up a brand new station yes. here in Grand Rapids, which is convenient because it's only 20 some miles away. So I called the guys up there, uh, talked to Chad. He said that, yep, they'll they'll set us up. And I tell you what, we, we couldn't be happier. We got the bears fed, um, but it was never ending. Every day, empty baits. I, I Every day. <laughs> up the amount of bait this year. I was going 10 gallons per day on per baits. Uh, we like to rotate our baits out to where I'm doing a north run one day and then a south run the next day. This year, we just could not keep these things fed enough. No. And you had a uh, guide in training this year. Guide in training, our son Finn. He uh, he helped me out with a, what we call a short run last year where he'd run like 12 baits for the day and then, you know, the next day I would take off and do the big run. This year, he's six years old now. It's time for him to get out there and actually experience this as a full-time guide. I wouldn't say he's a guy yet. He does have a lot of knowledge on bear activity he now. He's actually done really well. We'll have to we'll have to do a video of just Finn talking about bear baby and bear bait. He could set a bait better than any hunter. But this kid ran every single day except for maybe three of the baiting season. He actually helped Daddy bait every one of those days. Every single one. Um, unfortunately for us up here, uh, there's lack of childcare and 
and I do work full time um, during the week. So that was our alternative for for little Finn was to he's just got to ride with daddy. Um, this year we had in total at our top point by the time we dialed some baits back and got focused on our we had. How many baits? I think we had 23. 23 baits. 23 baits in total that were consistent, consecutive, every single day. And I'm used to running at least 30 to 34 baits a season. This year I knew we didn't have to go that far. As as active as our baits were, the amount of bears coming in these baits, I knew we could tone back a little bit. So we just put our clients on the best baits that we had and went with it. Yep, and, and every bait, it was it was a non-issue this year. In fact, one of our most active baits is about 75 yards from where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, <laughs> that was our, that's our son's bait. He, um, he wanted to set one behind the house. Last couple of years, he's been baiting these bears right in our front yard. And <laughs> I thought it was a big joke, but he had bears coming into him. And they were coming in at night, obviously, but... Tore apart his swing set? They, yeah, they, he did it right in his swing set. That is the craziest thing. So we did set... Uh, typically, we don't... We don't generally bait on our personal property. Uh, we do have some acreage here, and we're right on a river. Beautiful piece of property, but we typically don't place any baits on our property um, for the fact we're... You know, try not to attract bears in. This year, we already had a bear problem. They this were getting year, into our bait shed. So. They, they were tearing <laughs> apart this place, so it was time to take one out. We, um, we, we kept feeding them on the other side of the river in hopes that if we had food for them back there, they wouldn't come up here and tear any more stuff apart. So that's, that's exactly why I hunted across the river this year. We started that bait, I think, three days in the baiting. And sure enough, the first the first day I set that bait, within an hour, we had bear on that thing. So yeah. that's where that's where I hunted. That's where you're going to see this uh, video of the bear that I harvested on, including a big one. We had a check this check this guy out. We had a huge one on there. Now we didn't get this one. I didn't get that. One. I got to see him while I was in the stand. He came in. He walked into that bait. In of course, there was two trees in my way of actually taking a shot at this guy. But let's talk about that. What you noticed in your hunt. Um, it wasn't that they had an issue with committing to the bait. They knew what they wanted, but they were circling for a long period of time. He did circle for quite a long time. And you had an issue. This big guy, big bears are big for a reason. Um, not only are they well fed like every single bear was this year, um, but they, they get big for a reason. They're a lot more cautious. They're, they're smart, and, and sometimes you can't stump them. But he was, like clockwork, coming in every day, kind of that 1 to about 2.30 was his prime time to come in. I did, and I watched this bear. I had a cell cam over this thing during the whole camp, sitting around here waiting for people to call, you know, make sure that uh, we're getting these guys taken care of. I was watching this bear come in, and hitting this bait while we're sitting here in the garage waiting for phone calls. He was tormenting me the whole darn bear season. But then when you actually had the opportunity to go sit in the stand, like you mentioned, you seen him, and then this is what he pulls on you. turned around and walked away. At this point, I knew he has been, he busted me. Even though I'm using every cent possible in the woods to do, big bears are, they're not dumb. You can throw anything out there in the world. They know the difference between human scent and everything. I even, the, I was even the one that baited this thing. I think that most people underestimate scent control. I mean, and like us, we buy the oh, scent control I... products. We take every single step we can to eliminate the possibility of any human odor while we take the stand. 
Here's a sad fact, guys. There's no product in the world that is going to completely eliminate human odor. And a bear's sense of smell is seven times more sensitive than that of a bloodhound. So, this guy's still busted, yeah. He still got me. Still got you. Even him. though I was the one that baited that bear, I baited in my sweaty clothes, everything. He was just used to my odor, but he just knew something wasn't up, so he turned around and walked out of there. Luckily for me, we had more bear coming in that day, and I did have this nice bear come in, and it took forever for that one to come in. I mean, these bears are smart. They know when something isn't right. If the smell is off, they're going to they're gonna test it. Well, yeah, yeah, you said the one that you actually did end up harvesting, she was circling you for a good hour she at least. circled me for a long time. Yep. I watched her go back and forth, and she was huffing. I mean, she was checking the scent in the air is yep. what she was doing. My wind was going right into her that night, where the way she came in. And he even asked Justin, I even asked him, I, I texted him, I said, so should I fire up the smoker up at the top here? And <laughs> yeah, get the trigger going, get some bacon on that thing, let's get some sand going out there. But It was amazing, one morning, um, we were cooking bacon on the trigger and fired up the smoker and everything and no more than 15 minutes we have all the bacon on the trigger we had bear on that bait yeah <laughs> we're right here in camp we're, we're watching this thing go down but i had other baits it's not just we're my plan wasn't just to hunt back here if i had to i had other baits out there which we had to put hunters over those my backup baits because they were still going hot, and we wanted those guys to get some bears, so Absolutely. we ended up getting bear off those backup baits, which turned out perfect. We got to almost, like I say, most of these baits, we got bear off, and the other baits that uh, I kept going after season, they were still bear yeah. on them. So that's camp in general, 16 hunters, 16 bear. Yeah. What was your most memorable event most memorable event let's not your bears not included i know my bear <laughs> your bears not i shot bear before it was great i think that was the most memorable thing for me was having finn there to actually see yeah everything but, but uh, i'm talking client wise is you know I, I really have a hard time with this because we have so many great guys that come to our camp and that i so love to hunt with great memories the memories made every year is just it's outstanding i mean some of these guys have been coming to our camp for six years now yeah yeah so well repeats. we we did we do generally always have a couple of repeats whether they draw or they're um well i, well, I should to say we should go back into this some of our repeat clients are like 10 years ago <laughs> true true so we do ha we we benefit um a lot having guys back at camp um that we've had multiple times in the past uh, we have a couple clients, they've actually been with us consecutively for the last four years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been, it's always such a pleasure to, to have them. Um, and in fact, you know, like even repeats, like I, I look at the South Dakota boys. Yeah. All right, the South Dakota boys, it's a group of three. It's a grandfather, his son, and his grandson. They tried us out. Oh gosh, we're going like five years ago, six years ago? I five wanna, years ago. I want to say it was about five years ago because Finn, Finn was just an infant at yep. that time. So five years ago, and it was a hard year that year. Um, not saying that we didn't have a good season, but it could have been a lot better. Um, unfortunately, these guys, you know, they, they're farmers out in South Dakota. They had to have, you know, their ducks in a row before they were able. That's back when we were offering the first week and the second week. A lot of people wonder why we only offer the first, essentially the first week of season. In the state of Minnesota, 60 to 70 percent of your success in harvest is going to come within that first week period. We have, where we live here in Minnesota, uh, we're right in the heart of the Chippewa National Forest and we are such a prime area for small game hunting that by the time that your small game, your grouse season opens up, these bears do tend to turn nocturnal. Um, which I don't like paying to feed nighttime bear. Um, so that's when we made the decision, it was actually after that year, that we were only going to offer the first week of season. 
But these guys gave us another try. Their first time with us, um, they were fortunate to see a couple bear, uh, but never able to take one home. All three of them gave us a second try this year. All, all three tagged all out. Three tagged out. Uh, couldn't have been better. It was like, pretty incredible to make that happen for them. Um, it's, it's always nice. Same thing, we have other clients. In fact, one of the clients that was here the last, uh, or this was his fourth time with us. His first year with us, I think, was that same year. Yeah, his was that same year. That same year, and he wasn't able to get one. Um, I think he had a baptism or something he had to go, or am I thinking about another client? I don't know. He had a family thing that he had to go back for. Yeah. And then end up coming at the tail end of the week, and unfortunately we couldn't make it happen for him. But it's always such a pleasure to have these guys. This is why we say you come as a hunter, but you're going to leave as a friend. And heck, I'll even argue you basically leave as family. All these guys I keep in contact with throughout the year. Um, so it's always such a pleasure trying to, you know, make it happen. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But overall, what we strive for is to show them a good time. And I think we do pretty good at that. Yeah, I, I hope we do. I mean, if, if we don't, I mean, leave a comment, but we try to make this the best, you know, that's why we have a bear camp. We want everybody to come here as strangers and leave as friends. And then we have some friends that turn bear camp into bourbon camp. Yes, we do have that. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that either. Most memorable for me was that, um, I'm going to bring up a topic that I know you want to talk about. Let's talk about 6'5 Creedmoors. Let's not go there. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, this year, I love the guy, but the 6'5 Creedmoor that he brought, it's, it's the second time we've had this happen with 6'5 Creedmoors. And they've both been really big bear. Um, so speaking of, I, I do send out a mass email what I recommend for firearms and um, things like that to all of our clienteles. I will say after this year, it will no longer allow us to No, we're not, no, Never no again. more of that. Um, so, they go in, they make damage. I mean, they do. They they take out the innards big time. Oh, I'm not going to say, they. it is an effective round. But we're talking about uh, a round that was first designed as a match round. Um, and now we've developed and manufactured it to be a hunting round, and it is an incredible round, just not for this presentation. What? We're talking about a bullet that is traveling at 2,700 feet per second plus, and its target is less than 35 yards away. It just does not have that um, expansion on the bullet that you need. So I'm not saying it's not an effective round because both bear that were taken with a 6.5 Creedmoor did end up dead. We were able to recover. We were able to recover them, but they don't bleed. They are held. That's track. where the tracking dog came in a huge play. Let's talk about that. I made a new friend. Yeah, this girl was awesome. Her dog was phenomenal. If you guys, big game um, hunters here in northern Minnesota or whatever, and you ever find yourself in a situation where you know you know you made a solid shot and everything, but you can't pick up on blood. I want you to contact Juliet Flint with Stern Big Game Recovery. She is located out of Bemidji, and this girl kicks ass. She's helped us on three bear this year. Three bear, yep. Yeah. Three bear this year, two of which we didn't even have blood on. No blood. She, no the blood. blood just took us right to there, and I don't think it was within, I don't know. I was only with, on one of the recoveries, but the other one, it, it was like a matter of like, a couple minutes. Yes. And that bear was 200 and some yards away with zero blood. And she's phenomenal. Uh, no no BS, nothing with her. I mean, she gets in there, she gets the job done. Uh, she helped us recover three of our bear. The one thing about this year, it's not that they made bad shots. Um, it's not that they made even poor shots. They were, all three of those were good shots. It was fat. It was fat. The one thing, and I'm going to say, I think we are in for a hell of a winter, judging by the amount of fat on these animals. Every single one came in. I mean, we're, we're talking fat, um, especially when you're looking at rounds like the 6.5 Cree that doesn't leave an exit wound. Um, when that 
when that comes out, that fat's just going to plug up that hole. So it's just bleeding internally at that point. So some of these, we just did not have blood. So bear camp was a huge success. Um, we have a great team of guides that help us every nice. year. Great team. Most of these guys have been, well, most of them have been from the start. Uh, we have a couple guys that started, you know, a couple of years ago. The great guys. We love them. One of them started as a client. One of them started <laughs> as a client and came back as a guide. So. <laughs> you never know what's, what's going to happen. Um, so it's it's definitely a lot of fun, um, what we built here. It was very exciting that you were able to get out there and shoot a bear and being yeah. able to have Finny in. Um, like I say, you know, it's it's not easy. Believe me, I it, we know we have a two year old and a six year old, and we took them um, for six, seven, eight. Hours, I don't even know how long we were out there in the in the woods today, setting trail cams, getting them prepped for deer hunting. Now, yeah, it wasn't easy, but you know what? Get your kids involved. This this is going to be the moments that that they remember. Um, you being able to get your bear, us having a fleet of hunters that were able to tag out this was our best year yet we were at a hundred percent and we've came close a couple of years but this was our yeah, best season was, today yeah, our best season um one more thing i want to bring up uh justin can you tell me how long we've been together oh Since 23 how long is that <laughs> Oh, we're going on 17 years, son. 17 years. Right. 17. <laughs> we're going on 17 years. Uh, how many animals have I shot in the head? Quite a few. A lot, right? And how many times have you told me not to take a headshot? Told you many times not to take a headshot. And yet they're all dead, right? They're all dead, yeah. And, and so is yours, because what kind of shot did you take this year? So yeah, this year. <laughs> yeah. Hypocrite. <laughs> I'm calling out his hypocrisy right now. Second bear I've took with a headshot. They both dropped in their tracks. But I don't highly recommend we this. We do not condone headshots whatsoever. So many variables go into it. Um, what you're using the animal you're targeting, the distance, the elements, you know, wind, things like that. And more importantly, it depends on your marksmanship because you can... If you screw this up, I mean... It can you, be detrimental. I've, I've seen people try to take headshots where they just blow off the jaw. And the sad thing is, is that's an animal. That's that you didn't suffer. that that didn't die. It's gonna suffer, and so we don't condone it at all. But you did take a headshot. I did take a headshot. I was very comfortable with my shot. I had a nice rest. I'm very familiar with the rifle I'm using. It's one it that I can trust a hundred percent of the time. I had a solid rest. Of course, I was going to take the shot where its head was down in the bait. I knew it. And we're talking, that was probably from stand to bait. That's probably about 17 yards I pasted about out. 17 yards. Yeah. So we don't condone in headshots, but it all depends on the, the, the marksmanship mainly, as well as the elements around you and, and things like that. I'm comfortable with my firearms, but in a situation that I know that it's a little bit farther of a stretch, no, I'm not going to try that. So, but I just had to call him out on his on his BS a little bit. And all those him. years, all those years, but you did, you killed it. Yep. So, without further ado, let's get into the skipper's hunt.
Oh my God. That seemed like it took forever. I seen that bear come in first time four hours ago. He came to the bait site, he sniffed around, he turned around and walked straight back out. For the last couple hours he's been circling the bait, working his way in and out. Finally he came in. Yeah. I was not gonna take another chance. He knew what was he knew something was up. I figured I'd take a headshot on this one. And I'm glad I did. Now I don't have to drag it very far. Using the old 4570, 1895, SBL. <sighs> yes. I think it's time to call the guides. Get them back here. The little boy just got home from school. I could hear the dogs barking back home. Get him back here and let him see this. I'm sure, the moment. Well, the crew has arrived. Let's see who they brought. Looks like Mama and Little Finn. Ben, watch your muzzle. Well, here we are. I decided to take a nice head shot and put it down pretty quick. It's a nice pair. It's not the big one I seen earlier, but I'm not waiting around. Don't have a lot of hunting time this year, so I'm going to get it done. This can put meat in the freezer. What do you think about that, Ben? This is the little man that helped me bait all these. I was using the Rook Beer tonight. My favorite. What, what's your favorite thing? Rook Beer? Uh, a donut one. Oh, you like the jelly donut? <laughs> all right, let's get some pictures with this bear, buddy. Can you take a picture with it? something yeah hope you enjoyed the video I mean we we love putting these things together for y'all but uh, it wasn't a lot of great footage um, because somebody had a my piece phone was, my phone was going for a out. phone we just got new phones yesterday <laughs> yeah, new phones we're, we're looking forward to this but uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video Please click the subscribe button and keep following us along. We love doing these videos for you and hopefully you enjoy them as much as we do, you know, as much as we like putting them out there for you. So our next video is, um, we're gonna be going into the Big Woods Bucks, Northern Minnesota Big Woods. This is something we are very passionate about. Um, we don't guide whitetail hunting, but we sure do love it. Uh, up here where we live, just, the challenge itself is so much more than, I mean, it's, it's vast territory and a lot of land and finding these things, um, to make a successful hunt and is, is really something. So our next video is uh, going to be on how we get prepped and started between scouting and setting cameras, things like that. So make sure you tune into the next video, click subscribe so you can see all the latest notifications and tips coming out. We'll have a couple, uh, we're 
just ramping up our fall and Justin has the entire month of October booked for grouse trips. I think I only gave them, um, looking at the calendar, probably about four or five days off next month. So we're not going to have a ton of grouse stuff, but we'll, we'll, throw, you shorts in, in we'll, we'll throw you in some fun things about dog work and, and birds and whatnot. And maybe we'll get coached to sit down in a conversation. Yeah, maybe. And that is one guy that knows his birds. Um, other than that, guys, we want to thank you for watching. We hope you keep watching. Click subscribe and get out there and break the chain of routine. Thanks for watching, guys. Say, we're going to keep more videos coming your way, and who knows what's going to be on them. So if you like what you just seen, want to see more, then join us along on all of our adventures by hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget, get out there and break the chain of routine.